Vickers, what are you doing? What am I doing? Hammering nails. At this time of day? It's gone half past ten. Noel will be here any minute now, and he'll want to get on with his rehearsal. Now let me tell you something. I've got to have time to do my work, too. You'll get it, you'll get it, but you can't do that now. Well, when can I do it then? Well, after the rehearsal. Now, come on, clear up this mess, and let's set the second act of The Game as He Played It. Oh, no. Morning, Jane. I'm going to have that bang all morning. No, 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 you're stopping now. Well, hello, hello. Hello, Jimmy. Oh, thank you. So, did you see that I got the part I wanted in the next play? The youngest of the sisters? Oh, another week before you. <laughs> Things are looking <laughs> up for me at last. Oh, dear. oh yes, Peter looks as well. He's hangover again. Oh, I feel terrible. I didn't get to bed till three. Yes, good. Thank you. Hello, children. Oh, hello, 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 I say, have you seen the notes of old Cecil's prey? No. Oh, they're the most ghastly notes I've ever read in my life. <laughs> really? Oh, Lord, yes. Be off in three oh, nights. Oh, for <laughs> God's sake, just no, 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 up this morning. No, 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 just listen to this. Uh. Last night, we had the unfortunate experience to witness the gradual disintegration of one of our better-known actors. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Now, come on, come on, that's enough. Noel's just come in. Morning, producer. Morning, Philip. Morning, children. Morning, Morning. Morning. Mr. Bennett, don't you know Act One yet, dear? Yes, I do. Any letters, John? Uh, none at all. This is all the post there is. I'll put it in my office, will you? Oh, Philip, you can't see a thing here. Ask them to give us a spot of light, please. Oh, John. Give us a bit more light, Fred. That's oh, better. Right, come on, let's get started. Anyone missing? Lydia? As usual, our leading lady is ten minutes late. Make a note, will you please, to remind me to give her a good talking to about being so late. Roger. It might teach her to get to rehearsals on time in future. Oh, no, please don't. Oh, here I am. Oh, I'm so sorry. Here I am. You've set your tiny heart on always keeping us waiting, haven't you, dear? Oh, forgive me. I hunted everywhere for a taxi so that I should get here in time. Oh, but you haven't started yet, anyway, and I, I don't come on immediately. <laughs> Philip? Yes, dear? Please put Toto in my dressing room. Mm. Right. Mind you shut the door. Yeah. And she has to bring a dog along, too, as if there weren't enough dogs around here. Come on, now, let's get on with this ruddy play, the game as he played it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, who's on? I am. Um... Oh, oh, yes, sorry, oh, I am too. Oh, I've been here ages. Where do you want us? Ah, Lydia, darling. Yes, my sweet? You're in the scene, are you? Me? Oh, no. Then, for God's sake, get off. Oh. <laughs> now, can we start? The house of Leangala, strange room, half dining room, half study. We'll use the red set. Table laid for red me. Red right. desk and books and papers. A door leading back into Len's bedroom. Side door left, leading into the kitchen. Main entrance is right. Right. Uh, now, listen carefully. Over there, the main entrance. And over here, the kitchen. Jimmy. <laughs> Yes. You'll make your entrances and exits this side. We'll have that green baize door at the back there. <laughs> and some curtains. Right, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Scene one. Leon Garlo, Guido Venanci, Filippo, who is called Socrates. Oh, do I have to read all these damn directions? Yes, yes, of course. I've told you that a hundred times. Yes. When the curtain rises, Leon Garlo, wearing a cook's hat and apron, is busy beating an egg in a basin with a wooden spoon. What? Filippo, also dressed as a cook, is beating another egg. Guido Venanci is sitting listening to them. Oh, no, do I really have to wear a cook's hat? So it seems. It's certainly what's written well, there. Well, forgive my saying so, but it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yes. Ridiculous. What do you expect me to do if the French haven't got any more good comedies to send us and we're reduced to putting on plays by Pierre and <laughs> If you can understand his plays, you're a better man than I am. <laughs> yes, my dear fellow, a cook's hat, and you beat eggs. And do you think that having these eggs to beat, you then have nothing more on your hands? Oh, oh no, not a bit of it. You have to represent the shell of the eggs that you're beating. Shut <laughs> up! Listen when I'm explaining things. Yes, my dear fellow, the shell, or as you might say, the empty form of reason, without that content of instinct which is blind, understand? Me? No. Neither do I. However, let's get on with it. It's going to be a wonderful flop anyway. Yes. Jimmy, um, yes. look, I suggest you turn to the audience a bit more, about uh, three quarters face. Oh, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, well, what with the obtuseness of the dialogue and the audiences not being able to hear you, the whole thing will go to hell. Now, come along, come along, let's get started. Well, I say, no. do you mind if I put the top back on my prompt box? There's a devil drop you Put it where you like. Excuse me, sir. Now, what's the matter? Excuse me, sir. There are some people here, sir, asking for you. But I've got a rehearsal on at the moment. No one's allowed in here while a rehearsal's going on. Who are you? What do you want? We are here in search of an author. In search of an author? Which author? 
Any author, sir. Come, children. There's no author here. We're not rehearsing a new play. Then so much the better, sir. We can be your new play. Oh, what? Yes, <laughs> yes, but if there isn't any author, unless you would like to be the author. Are you people trying to be funny? No, how can you suggest such a thing? On the contrary, we are bringing you a terrible and grievous drama. And we might make your fortune for you. Oh, well, perhaps you'll do me the kindness of getting out of this theatre. We've got no time to waste on lunatics. Oh, leave it, Father. What's the use? Oh, but, but you know very well, don't you, that life is full of things that are infinitely absurd. Things that, for all their impudent absurdity, have no need to masquerade as truth, because they are true. What the devil are you talking about? What I'm saying is that reversing the usual order of things, forcing oneself to a contrary way of action, may well be construed as madness. As, for instance, when we create things which have all the appearance of reality in order that they shall look like the realities themselves. But allow me to observe that if this indeed be madness, it is nonetheless the raison d'etre of your profession. Oh, oh yes. yes. So you think ours is a profession of lunatics, do you? Yes. Making what isn't true seem true, without having to, for fun... fun. Well, isn't it your function to give life on the stage to imaginary characters? <laughs> I should like you to know, my dear sir, that the actor's profession is a most noble one. And although nowadays, with things in the state they are, our playwrights give us stupid comedies to act and puppets to represent instead of men, I'd have you know that it is our boast that we have given life here on these very boards to immortal works. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you are. Oh, that's it exactly. To living beings. To beings who are more alive than those who breathe and wear clothes. Less real, perhaps, but truer. We are in complete agreement. But, what on earth? You said just now. No, no, I, I said that because of your... Well, because you shouted at us that you'd no time to waste on lunatics. Well, nobody can know better than you that nature makes use of the instrument of human fantasy to pursue her work of creation on a higher level. True enough, true enough, but where does all this get us? Nowhere. I only wish to show you that one is born into life in so many ways, in so many forms, as a tree or a stone, as water or as a butterfly <laughs> or as a woman, and that one can be born a character. And you, together with these other people, were born a character. Exactly. And alive, as you see. <laughs> I'm sorry that you laugh like that, because, I repeat, we carry within ourselves a terrible and grievous drama, as you can deduce for yourselves from this woman veiled in black, this timid little boy, and this sweet little girl. Come here, my dear. Oh, thank you. Come, children. I didn't want to come. He's too good for us. Come, let us stand here and show ourselves. The father, the mother, the son, the stepdaughter, the little boy, and the little girl. Bravo! Bravo. Shut up! What the... And you, get out of here. Clear out of here, Philip. For God's sake, clear them out. Yes, no. Look, uh, uh, go away! Go uh, away! Go away! No, no. Go away. Listen. We... I tell you, we've got work to do. You can't go about playing practical jokes like this. I wonder at your incredulity. Is it perhaps that you're not accustomed to seeing the characters created by an author leaping to life up here on the stage when they come face to face with each other? Or is it perhaps that there's no script there that contains That's us. That's not it, but... Th but believe me, sir, we really are six characters and very, very interesting, but we've been cut adrift. Yes, that's it. We've been cut adrift. In the sense you understand that the author who created us as living beings either couldn't or wouldn't put us materially into the world of art. And it was truly a crime because he who has the good fortune to be born a living character may snap his fingers at death even. He will never die. Man, the writer, the instrument of creation will die. But what is created by him will never die. Who was Sanko Panza? Who was Macorber? And yet they live eternally because, living seeds, they had the good fortune to find a fruitful womb, a fantasy which knew how to raise and nourish them and to make them live through all eternity. Look, all this is very, very fine indeed. But what do you want here? We wish to live, sir. Through all eternity? No, sir. 
just for a moment in you. Listen to him. Yes, listen to him. They want to live in us. Well, isn't that what you're here for? No, I don't mind, so long as I get her. Oh, listen. <laughs> now, listen, please. The play is yet in the making. But if you and your actors are willing, we can settle it all between us without further delay. And where's the script? The script is in us. <laughs> the drama is in us. We are the drama, and we are impatient to act it. So fiercely does our inner passion urge us on. Oh, my passion, if you only knew, my passion for him. No, 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 you keep out of this, please. You keep out for a moment. And please don't laugh like that. Oh, mayn't I? Then perhaps you'll allow me, ladies and gentlemen, although it's scarcely two months since my father died, just to watch how I can dance and sing. Shut up! What do you think this is, a cabaret? Tell me something, sir. Is she mad? What do you mean by madness? It's worse than that. Oh, it's something very much worse than that. Listen, let's put this drama on at once. Please. Then you'll see that at a certain moment I... When this little darling girl here... Isn't she a dear, you little darling, you dear little darling... Well, when God suddenly takes this child away from her poor mother and that little imbecile of a boy there does the stupidest of all stupid things like the idiot he is, then you'll see me run away. Yes, I shall run away. And, oh, how I'm longing for that moment to come. Because after all the very intimate things that have happened between him and me, I can't remain any longer with these people, having to witness my mother's anguish because of that queer fish there, my mother's son. Leave me out of this. Well, look at him, look at him. See how indifferent, how frigid he is, because he's the legitimate son. He is. He despises me. He despises my stupid little brother. He despises this dear little girl. Because we're bastards, do you understand? Because we're bastards. Oh, my poor child. And he doesn't even want to recognize this poor woman as his mother, this poor woman who is the mother of the four of us. He looks down on her as if she were only the mother of us three bastards. They're rich. Oh, please, sir. In the name of these two little children, I beg you, I beg you. Look out. Quick, quick, a chair. A chair for this poor widow. Quick, get a chair, get a chair. Here you are. Sit down here. Look at her. No. Let them look at you. Oh, no, no. Don't touch my veil. Oh, my God, stop it, please. But let them see you. I beg you, sir, don't listen to this man. Don't let him carry out his plan. You must prevent him. It's horrible. I don't get this at all. I haven't got the slightest idea what you're talking about. Is this lady your wife? Yes, sir. My wife. Then how does it come about that she's a widow if you're still alive? <laughs> no, don't laugh. Don't laugh like that, for pity's sake. It is in this fact that her drama lies. She had another man. No! Another man who ought to be here. No! He's got the good luck to be dead. He died two months ago, as I just told you. We're still wearing mourning for him, as you can see. But it's not because he's dead that he's not here... Her drama does not lie in the love of two men for whom she, being incapable of love, could feel nothing. She is not a woman. She is a mother. And her drama, and how powerful it is, her drama lies entirely, in fact, in these four children. The children of the two men that she had. Did you say that I had them? Do you dare to say that I had these two men to suggest that I wanted them? It was his doing, sir. He gave them to me. He forced them on me. He forced me. He forced me to go away with that other man. It's not true. Not true? It's not true. It's not true, I say. Well, what could you possibly know about it? It's not true. Don't you believe her, sir? Do you know why she said that? Because of him, her son. That's why she said it. She tortures herself, wears herself out with anguish because of the indifference of that son of hers. You leave me alone. She wants him to believe that if she abandoned him when he was two years old, it was because his father forced her to do it. He forced me to do it. He forced me as God is my witness. Ask his father if it's not true. Make him tell my son. My daughter knows nothing at all about the matter. I know that while my father lived, you were always happy. Oh. You had a peaceful and contented life together. Deny it if you can. I don't. I he was don't. always most loving, always <laughs> kindness itself towards you. Well, isn't it true? Go on, you stupid little idiot. Say it's true. Why don't you speak? Leave the poor little boy alone. 
Why do you want to make me appear an ungrateful woman? I don't want to say anything against your father. I, I only said that it wasn't my fault, that it wasn't just to satisfy my own desires that I left my husband's house and abandoned my son. What she says is true, sir. It was my doing. My God, what a show. Sirs, and we're the audience this time. For once in a while. No, 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 children. Let's listen to this. Let's hear what they've got to say. Yes, listen to this chunk of philosophy you're going to get now. He'll tell you all about the demon of experiment. You're a cynical idiot, as I've told you a hundred times. He mocks me, sir. He mocks me because of this expression that I've discovered in my own defense. Words, words. Yes, words, words. They can always bring consolation to us, to every one of us. When we're confronted by something for which there's no explanation, when we're face to face with an evil that consumes us, the consolation of finding a word that tells us nothing, but that brings us peace. And dulls our sense of remorse. Yes, that above all. Dulls our sense of remorse. No, that is not true. It wasn't with words alone that I quietened remorse within me. No, you did it with a little money as well. With the hundred leary that he was going to offer me as payment, ladies and gentlemen. That was vile. Vile? There they were in a pale blue envelope on the little mahogany table in the room behind Madame Pache's shop. Madame Pache, one of those mesdames who pretend to say robe manteau so that they can attract us poor girls from decent families into their workrooms. And she's bought the right to tyrannize over the whole lot of us with those hundred lira that he was going to pay her. But by good fortune, and let me emphasize this, he had no cause to pay her anything. <laughs> yes, but it was a very near thing. Oh, yes, it was, you know. For shame! For shame! <laughs> shame? No. This is my revenge. I'm simply trembling with desire to live that scene, that room. Over here is the shop window with all the coats in it. And over there, the divan, the long mirror and the screen. And in front of the window, that little mahogany table and the pale blue envelope with a hundred lire inside. Oh, yes, I can see it quite clearly. I'd only have to stretch out my hand and I could pick it up. But you gentlemen really ought to turn your backs now because I'm almost naked. I no longer blush because he's the one who does the blushing now. But let me tell you, he was very pale then. Oh, yes, very pale indeed. You can believe me. I haven't the vaguest idea what you're talking about. I can well believe it when you get things hurled at you like that. Put your foot down, sir. And let me speak before you believe all these horrible slanders she's so viciously heaping upon me without letting me get a word of explanation in. Ah, but this isn't the place for your long-winded fairy stories, you but know. But I'm not going to. I want to explain things to him. Oh, yes, I bet you do. You'll explain everything so that it suits you, won't you? Now, please, let's not quarrel about words. But can't you see that here we have the cause of all the trouble in the use of words? Each one of us has a whole world of things inside him, and each one of us has his own particular world. How can we understand each other if into the words which I speak I put the sense and the value of things as I understand them within myself, whilst at the same time whoever is listening to them inevitably assumes them to have the sense and value that they have for him, the sense and value that they have in the world that he has within him. We think we understand one another but we never really do understand. Look at this situation, for example. All my pity, all the pity that I feel for this woman, she sees as the most ferocious cruelty. But you turned me out of the there, house. Do you hear? I turned her out. She really believed that I was turning her out. Oh, and you know how to talk. I don't believe me. After he'd married me, and goodness knows why, for I was a poor, humble woman. But it was just because of that. It was your humility that I loved in you. I married you for your humility, believing... Words. No, no, you see... You see, she says, no, it's terrifying, believe me, it's really terrifying, this, this deafness, this, this mental deafness of hers. Affection, yes, for her children, but deaf, mentally deaf, deaf to the point of desperation. True enough, but now let him tell us what good all his cleverness has ever done for us. If we could only foresee all the ill that can result from the good that we believe we are doing. 
pretty girl, isn't she? Yes, excuse me, Noel, but are you going on with the rehearsal? Yes, 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 of course. Just at the moment, I want to hear what these people have to say. This is really something quite new. I think it's rather interesting mm. for those that are interested, like Jimmy. Is just a moment, Lydia, darling, please. But, sir, you'll have to explain everything clearly. Yes, yes, I will. Well, you see, I had a poor man working under me. He was my secretary and devoted to me and to my wife, who understood her in every way, in everything. Oh, the, there wasn't the slightest suspicion of anything wrong. He was a good man, a humble man, just like her. They were incapable, both of them, not only of doing evil, but even of thinking. So instead he thought about it for them and then got on with it. That is not true! I thought that what I should be doing would be for their good. Oh, and for mine, too, I confess that. Yes. Yes, you see, things had come to such a pass that I couldn't say a single word to either of them without their immediately exchanging an understanding look, without the ones immediately trying to catch the other's eye, for advice as to how to take what I had said so that I shouldn't get into a bad temper. Well... As you'll readily appreciate, it was enough to keep me in a state of continual fury, of intolerable exasperation. But forgive my asking, sir, why didn't you give the secretary of yours the sack? But that's exactly what I did do, as a matter of fact. But then, then I had to watch that poor woman wandering forlornly about the house like some poor lost creature. Like one of those stray animals you take in out of charity. But, yes, yes, your son. You were going to tell him about your son, but, weren't you? But, sir, first of all, he tore my son away from me. Not out of any desire to be cruel, though. I took him away so that by living in the country, in contact with nature, he might grow up strong and healthy. And just look at him. Just leave me alone. And is it my fault, too, that he's grown up the way he has? I sent him to a wet nurse in the country, a peasant's wife, because my wife didn't seem strong enough to me, although she came of a humble family, and it was for that reason that I'd married her. Just a, a whim, maybe. But then, what, what was I to do? I've always had this cursed longing for a certain solid... Moral healthiness. <laughs> oh, make her stop that noise, please. I can't stand it. Be quiet. Let me hear what he has to say, for God's sake. <sighs> That's better. I, I could no longer stand the sight of that woman near me. Not so much because of the irritation she caused me, but the nausea, the very real nausea with which she inspired me. But rather because of the pain... The pain and the anguish that I was suffering on her account. And he sent me away. Well provided with everything to that other man. So that she might be free of me. So that he might be free as well. Yes. Yes, I admit that. And a great deal of harm came as a result of it. But I meant well. And I did it more for her sake than for my own. I swear that. Did I ever lose sight of you? Tell me, did I ever lose sight of you until that other fellow took you away suddenly to some other town? All unknown to me? Just because he'd got some queer notion into his head about the interest I was showing in you. An interest which was pure, I assure you, sir, without the slightest suspicion of any ulterior motive about it. And I watched the new little family that grew up around her with incredible tenderness. <laughs> For all her mockery and her laughter, she can testify to that. Oh, I most certainly can. I was such a sweet little girl, with plaits down to my shoulders and my knickers a little bit longer than my frock. I used to see him standing there by the door of the school as I came out. He came to see how I was growing up. Oh, this is vile, treacherous, infamous. What makes you say it's infamous? It's infamous, it's infamous. After my wife had gone away, my house suddenly seemed empty. She had been a burden on my spirit, but she had filled my house with her presence. Left alone, I, I wandered through the rooms like some lost soul. And then, well, strange as it may seem, it's the simple truth. I, I became curious about her new little family. 
gradually I was attracted to this family, which had come into being as the result of what I had done. I felt a real need, a very real need, to believe that she was happy, at peace, absorbed in the simple everyday duties of life. I wanted to look on her as being fortunate, because she was far removed from the complicated torments of my spirit. And so, to have some proof of this, I used to go and watch that little girl come out of school. <laughs> I should just say he did. He used to follow me along the street. He'd smile at me. When I reached home, he'd wave to me like this. I would look at him rather provocatively, opening my eyes wide. Well, I didn't know who he might be. I told my mother about him, and she knew at once who it must be. Oh, yes, I knew. At first, she didn't want to let me go to school again, and she kept me away for several days. And when I did go back, I saw him waiting for me at the door again, looking so ridiculous with a brown paper bag in his hand. Oh, no, 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 how dare you. He came up to me and patted me. And then he took a lovely large straw hat out of the bag with uh, lots of lovely little roses on it. And all oh, for me. All this is a bit off the point, you know. Yes, literature, literature. Literature, indeed. This is life. Passion. Yes, it may be, but you certainly can't act this sort of stuff. Oh, I agree with you. Because all this is only leading up to the main action. I'm not suggesting that this part should be acted. As a matter of fact, you can quite well see she is no longer that little girl with plaits down to her shoulders. And her knickers a little bit longer than her front. It is now, now that the drama comes, something new, something complex. As soon as my father died... They we were... fell into the most wretched poverty. They came back here, and the drama broke out unforeseen and violent in its intensity when they returned. When I was impelled by the demands of my miserable flesh, which is still alive with desire. Oh, the wretchedness. The unutterable wretchedness of the man who's alone and who detests the vileness of casual affairs. When he's not old enough to do without a woman and not really young enough to be able to go and look for one without feeling a sense of shame. Wretchedness, did I say? It's horrible. It's horrible. Because no woman is any longer capable of giving him love. And when he realizes this, he ought to do without. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, I know. Each one of us, when he appears before his fellow men, is clothed with a certain dignity. But deep down, inside himself, he knows what unconfessable things go on in the secrecy of his own heart. We give way. Yes, we give way to temptation, only to rise again immediately, filled with a great eagerness to re-establish our dignity in all its solid entirety, just as if it were a tombstone on some grave in which we'd buried, in which we'd hidden from our eyes every sign, the very memory itself of our shame. And everyone is just like that. Only there are some of us who lack the courage to talk about certain things. But they've got the courage to do them, all of them. Oh, yes, yes, all of them, but only in secret. And that's why it needs so much more courage to talk about them. A man's only got to mention these things, and the words have hardly left his lips before he's been labelled a cynic. And all the time it's not true. He's just like everybody else. In fact, he's, he's better than they are because he's not afraid to reveal with the light of his intelligence that red blush of shame which is inherent in human bestiality. That shame to which bestial man closes his eyes in order not to see it. And the woman? Yes, woman. What kind of a being is she? She looks at you tantalizingly, invitingly. You take her in your arms, and no sooner is she clasped firmly in your arms than she shuts her eyes. It is the sign of her mission, the sign by which she says to man, Blind yourself, for I am blind. And what about when she no longer shuts her eyes, when she no longer feels the need to hide her blushing shame from herself by closing her eyes? When she sees instead the blushing shame of man who has blinded himself without love. 
What disgust, what unutterable disgust does she feel then for all these intellectual complications, for all this philosophy which reveals the beast in man and then tries to save him, tries to excuse him. I can't stand here and listen to him. Nothing is more contemptible than their maudlin remorse, those crocodile tears. Oh, now let's get back to the point. Let's get to the point. This is just a lot of beating about the bush. Very well, sir, very well. I couldn't possibly be expected to know that when that man died and they returned here in such utter poverty, that her mother would go out to work as a dressmaker in order to support the children. What could I do? More than of all people, she'd gone to work for that, for that Madame Patchett who's a high-class dressmaker on the surface. She does work for only the best sort of people, but she arranges things so that these fine ladies act as a screen without prejudice to the others, who are only so-so. Oh, believe me, sir, it never entered my head for one moment that that old hag gave me work because she had her eye on my daughter. Do you know what that woman used to do when I took her back the work that my mother had done? She'd point out to me how the material had been ruined by giving it to my mother to sew. Oh, she'd grumble about this and she'd grumble about that. And so, you understand, I had to pay for it. Oh, my God. And all the time, this poor creature thought that she was sacrificing herself for me and for those two children as she sat up all night sewing away at work for Madame Pache. And, and it was there one day that you met... Him, yes, him, an old client... Now there's a scene for you to put on, absolutely superb. With her, the mother, arriving. Almost in time. No, no, in time. In time. Fortunately, I recognized her in time. And I took them all back home with me. Now you can imagine what the situation is like for both of us. This girl, just as you see her, and I. No longer able to look her in the face. It's utterly ridiculous. How can I possibly be expected, after all that, to be a modest young miss, well-bred and virtuous, in accordance with his confounded aspirations for a solid moral healthiness? My drama lies entirely in this one thing. In my being conscious that each one of us believes himself to be a single person. But it's not true. Each one of us is many persons. And all the time. We are under the illusion of always being one and the same person for everybody. We believe that we are always this one person in whatever it is that we may be doing, but it's not true. It's not true. We see this very clearly when by some tragic chance we are, as it were, caught up whilst in the middle of doing something and find ourselves suspended in midair. And then we perceive that all of us was not what in we were doing and that it would therefore be an atrocious injustice to us to judge us by that action alone, to keep us suspended like that, to keep us in a pillory throughout all existence, as if our whole life were completely summed up in that one deed. Now do you understand the treachery of this girl? She surprised me somewhere where I shouldn't have been and doing something that I shouldn't have been doing with her. She surprised an aspect of me that should never have existed for her. And this, this above all, is what I feel most strongly about. And as you can see, the drama acquires a tremendous value from this concept. Then there's the position of the others, too. Of him, my son. Leave me alone. I have nothing to do with all this. What do you mean, you've got nothing to do with all this? I've got nothing to do with it. And I don't want to have anything to do with it, because, as you quite well know, I wasn't meant to be mixed up in all this with the rest of you. Oh, common. That's what we are, and he's a fine gentleman. But as you may have noticed, every now and again I fix him with a contemptuous look, and he lowers his eyes. Because he knows the harm he's done me. I? You, yes, you. It's all your fault that I became a prostitute. <laughs> we were invaders who had come to disturb the kingdom of your legitimacy. Oh, for heaven's sake. I should just like you, Mr. Producer, to be present at certain little scenes that took place between him and me. He says that I tyrannized over everybody, but it's just because of the way that he behaved that I took advantage of the thing that he calls vile. Why I exploited the reason for my coming into his house with my mother, who is his mother as well. And I went into that house as mistress of it. It's all very easy for them. It's fine sport, all of them ganging up against me. But just you imagine the position of a son. One fine day, while he's sitting quietly at home, 
he sees an impudent and brazen young woman arrive, asking for his father. And heaven knows what her business is with him. Later, he sees her come back as brazen as ever, bringing that little girl with her. And finally, he sees her treating his father, without knowing in the least why, in a very equivocal and very much to the point manner, asking him for money, in a tone of voice which leads you to suppose that he must give it to her. Must give it to her because he has every obligation to do so. As indeed I have. It is an obligation I owe your mother. How should I know that? When had I ever seen or even heard of her? Then one day I see her arrive with her, together with that boy and the little girl. And they say to me, this is your mother too, you know. Little by little I begin to understand, largely as a result of the way this girl goes on, why it is they've come to live with us. So suddenly... So unexpectedly. What I feel, what I experience, I neither wish nor am able to express. I wouldn't even wish to confess it to myself. So no action can be hoped for from me in this affair. Believe me, I'm a dramatically unrealized character. And I don't feel the least bit at ease in their company, so please leave me out of it. What? But it's just because you're what like What do you that? know about it? How do you know what I'm like? When have you ever bothered yourself about me? I admit it. I admit it. But isn't that a dramatic situation in itself? This aloofness of yours, which is so cruel to me and to your mother. Your mother, who returns home and sees you almost for the first time. You're so grown up that she doesn't recognize you. But she knows that you're her son. Now look, you see. There. You see, she's crying. Like the fool she is. He says he's got nothing to do with all this, when, as a matter of fact, almost the whole action hinges on him. And look at that little boy. See how he clings to his mother all the time, frightened and humiliated. And it's his fault that he's like that. That little boy's position is the most painful of all. More than any of them, he feels himself to be an outsider... And so the poor little chap feels mortified, humiliated at being taken into my home, out of charity, as it were. He's just like his father, you see. He's humble, doesn't say a word. I don't think it's a good idea to have him in. You've no idea what a nuisance boys are on the stage. Oh, but he won't be a nuisance for long. He disappears almost immediately. And the little girl, too. In fact, she is the first to go. Ah, this is terrific. Oh, it's really most interesting. Very interesting indeed. I can see we've got the makings of a pretty good play here. Uh, but you do understand, without an author, you see, I, I could give you the address of somebody. No, 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 no. But look, look, shall you? You be the author. Me? What the devil are you talking yes, about? Yes, yes, you, 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 you. Why not? Because I've never written anything in my life. That's why not. Then why not try your hand at it now? Oh, there's nothing to it. Everybody is doing it. And your job's made all the easier for you because we are here, all of us, alive before you. Oh, that's not enough. Not enough? When you see us live our drama... Yes, 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 yes. But we'll still need somebody to write the play. Oh, no, no. Somebody to take it down, possibly, whilst we act it out scene by scene. It'll be quite sufficient if we make a, a rough sketch of it first and then... Yes. Yes. You almost succeed in tempting ah. me. <laughs> yes, it would be rather fun. Certainly have a shot at it. Of course. Oh, but but you'll see. You'll see what amazing, what what wonderful scenes will emerge. I can, I can tell you what they are here and now. You tempt me. You tempt me. Let's have a go at it. Come with me into my office. Um, look, you can have a few minutes' break. Don't go too far away. I want you all back again in about a quarter of an hour or 20 minutes. Oh, I know. Well, let's see what we can make of it. We might get something really extraordinary out of it. But there's no might about it, sir. There are most exciting scenes. Is Noel serious? What's he going to do? Oh, this is Does he expect us to knock up a play in five minutes? <laughs> yes, like the actors in the old comedy of the life. Yeah. Yeah. He thinks I'm going to have to do with Well, you certainly won't catch me, George. I should like to know who these people are. Who do you think they're likely to be? They're probably escaped lunatics. Or crooks. Does he really take what they say seriously? Vanity, that's what it is. The vanity of a very Absolutely of a unheard of. The stage is can't enjoying it. Ah, well, after all, we shall all have the pleasure of seeing what it's all about. Right, now, Captain.
Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Is everybody here? Let's have a little quiet, please. Can we begin, please? Hayes, set the stage for the parlour scene. A couple of flats and a doll. Do as quickly as you can. Do you get those beds and switch, will you? Have a look, please, see if we've got some sort of sofa or divan in the props room, will you? Josephine, do you mind, please? Well, there's the uh, green one, sir. No, no, green won't do. It was yellow. Yellow-flowered plush. A huge thing and most comfortable. Well, we haven't got anything like that, Miss... Doesn't matter. Give me what there is. What do you mean, it doesn't matter? Madame Patch is famous, so... We only want it for this run-through. Please don't interfere. Oh, and see if we've got a shop. Yeah. And a little table. The little mahogany table for the pale blue envelope. There's that little one. You know, the gold-painted one. That'll do fine. Shove it on. You need a long mirror. And the screen. You must have a screen, please. Well, else, how can I manage? Don't you worry, miss. We've got masses of them. Now, Edgar, Mm -hmm. if you'll get into position while they're setting the stage... Now, look, um, here's an outline of the thing. Act one. Act one, right? Uh-huh. Act two. Uh-huh. But you'll really have to excel yourself this time. You mean take it down in shorthand? Oh, good man, can you do shorthand? Well, I don't know much about prompting, but shorthand... Good, now follow I the might... scenes closely, Edgar, as we play them, and try and fix the lines, or at least the most important ones. Yes, yes. Right, ladies and gentlemen, clear the stage, please. Oh. Um, no, Lydia and Jimmy, yes. come over the side, pay careful attention to what Ladies, goes on with you. Excuse right. me, no, but we haven't been given... A... There won't be any improvising to do, darling, don't you worry. Well, what do we have to do then, no? Nothing, Jimmy, old boy. Well, For the moment, all you've got to do is stay over there and watch what happens. You'll get your parts later. Yes, now we're going to have a rehearsal, or as much of one as we can in the circumstances, and they'll be doing the rehearsing. We are? But, but excuse me, in what way will it be a rehearsal? Well, a rehearsal. A rehearsal for, for their benefit. But if we are the characters... Just so, the characters. But it's not characters that act here. It's actors who do the acting here. The characters remain there in the script when there is a script. Precisely. And since there is no script and you have the good fortune to have the characters here alive before your very eyes... Oh, this is wonderful. Do you want to do everything on your own? Act? Present yourselves to the public? Yes. Just as we are. Let me tell you, you'd make a wonderful sight. If you'll pardon the question, sir, what you should we be then? You're not going to pretend that you can act, are you? Quite enough to make a cat laugh. <laughs> well, there you are, you see, they're laughing at the idea. Now, look, come on, children, I must tell you what your parts are. That's not so very difficult. They pretty well cast themselves. Uh, you, Janet, dear? Yes, my face. The mother. Uh-huh. We'll have to find a name for her, won't we? Amalia. But that's your wife's name. We can hardly call her by her real name. And why not? When that's her name. All right, if you want it to be Amalia, Amalia it shall be. Or we'll find some other name. Just for the present, we'll refer to the characters in this way. You, Peter, the son. All right, now. And you, Lydia Darling, will play the stepdaughter, of course. (laughs) What did you say? That woman there, me? And what's making you laugh? (laughs) Nobody's ever dared to laugh at me before. Either you treat me with respect or I'm walking out. Oh, no, forgive me. I I wasn't laughing at you. You should feel yourself honoured to be played by that woman there. But my remark wasn't meant as criticism of you. I was thinking about myself. Because I can't see myself in you at all. I I don't know how to... You're not a bit like me. Yes, you see, that is the point that I wanted to make. Look, all that we express... What do you mean, all that you express? Do you think that this whatever it is that you express is something you've got inside you? Not a bit of it. Aren't even the things we express our own? Of course they aren't. The things that you express become material here for the actors who give it body and form, voice and gesture. And let me tell you, my actors have given expression to much loftier material than this. This stuff of yours is so trivial that, believe me, if it comes off on the stage, the credit will all be due to my actors. I, I don't care to contradict you, but please believe me when I tell you that we, we who have these bodies... These features, who are as you see us now, we are suffering horribly. Oh, the makeup will take care of all that, at least as far as your faces are concerned. Perhaps, but what about our voices? What about our gestures? Now, look here. You, as yourself, just cannot exist here. Here, there's an actor who'll play you. And let that be an end to all this argument. I understand. And now I think I see why our author didn't wish to put us on the stage after all. He saw us as we are, alive. He saw us as living beings. I, 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 please, I, I don't want to offend your actors. Heaven forbid that I should. But I think that seeing myself acted now by, well, I, I don't know quite by whom. By me, if you have no objection. I am most deeply honoured, sir. 
But, uh, well, I, I think that however much of his art this gentleman puts into absorbing me into himself, however much he wills it... Uh, go on, go on. Don't well, I, I should say that the performance he'll give, even if he makes himself up to look as much like me as he can... Well, I should say that with his figure... Oh. It, no, 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 it will be difficult for it to be a performance of me, of me as I really am. It will rather be leaving aside the question of his appearance. It will be how he interprets what I am, how he sees me, if he sees me as anything at all, and not as I, deep down within myself, feel myself to be. And it certainly seems to me that whoever is called upon to criticize us will have to take this into account. Oh, so you're already thinking about what the critics will say, are you? <laughs> Here am I, still trying to get the play straight. The critics can say what they like. We'd be much better occupied in thinking about getting the play on, if we can. Now, come on, let's make a start, please. Is everything ready? Uh, well, come on, don't clutter up the place. Let me see how it looks. And now, don't let's lose any more time. Now, miss, do you think the set looks all right? I just don't recognize it at all. Oh, good Lord, you surely didn't hope that we were going to reconstruct that room behind Madame Pache's shop here on the stage, did you? You did tell me it had flowered wallpaper, didn't you, sir? Yes. Why? Yes, well, it's not white, and it's got stripes on it, but it'll have to do. As for the furniture, um, I think we've more or less got everything we need. John? Uh, yes, Mr. Johnson? That little table, bring it down here a bit, will you? Uh, right you are, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Right, now, come on. First scene, the young lady. At last. No, 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 no. Wait a moment, Lydia. I said the young lady. You just stay there and watch. How I make it live. I'll know how to make it live. Don't you worry. Once I get started. Ladies and gentlemen, don't let's have any arguing, please. Right. Now, the first scene is between the young lady and Madame Pache. Oh, what about this Madame Pache? She is not with us. Oh, what do we do about her? But she's alive. She is alive, too. Yes, yes, but where is she? Well, if you'll just allow me, please, to have a word with your people, I, I wonder if you ladies would do me the kindness of lending me your hats for a moment. What? Oh, what? Oh, hats? But why? What are you going to do with the women's hats? Oh, nothing, no. nothing. I just want to put them on these pegs for a moment. And perhaps one of you ladies would be so kind as to take off your coat. They're <laughs> Yes. Oh. So, so that I can, so that I can hang them up here just for a moment or so, please. <laughs> Will you do me this favour? Well, oh, well. Will you? Here you are, my new hat. Oh, this is really funny. I hope my coat is the right colour. <laughs> do we have to put them on show? Precisely. You have to put them on show, like this. Is one allowed to know what you're up to? Uh, well, yes. If we set the stage better, who knows whether Madame Pachi may not be attracted by the objects of her trade and perhaps appear among us. Look. 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 I am called. Well, here I am, as always, when I'm needed. Here she is, here she is, oh, madame. It's Madame Pache. What did I tell you? Here she is. Yes, here she is. What sort of a game do you call this? Thank you, all. What's going on? Where did she spring from? They were keeping her in reserve. It's back to the musical and country. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> One moment, please. Why should you wish to destroy this prodigy of reality which was born, which was evoked, attractive and formed by this scene itself? Why do you want to spoil it all just because of some niggling, vulgar convention of truth? Which of you actresses will be playing the part of Madame Pache? I suppose it'll have to be me. Well, that woman is Madame Pache. She is Madame Pache in person. Oh, Look, God. my daughter recognized and went up to her at once. Now, now watch this scene. Just watch it. <laughs> Well, but what did she say? We can't hear a thing. Speak up, louder, please. Did you say louder? What do you mean, louder? What we're talking about is scarcely the sort of thing to be shouted from the rooftops. It would mean prison for Madame Pache. Indeed. So that's how it is, is it? But let me tell you something, my dear young lady. Here in the theatre, you've got to make yourself heard. This scene's got to be got over. Pretend you're alone in the room behind the shop where nobody can hear you. Uh-uh. What do you mean, uh-uh? There's someone who'll hear us if she speaks up. Oh, my God, do you mean to say somebody else is going to burst in on us? Oh. No, 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 you see, they are alluding to me. 
I, I have to be there, waiting behind the door, and Madame Pache knows it. So if you will excuse me, please, I'll, I'll go, so that I'm all ready to make my entrance. No, 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 wait a moment. When you're here, you have to respect the conventions of the theatre. Before you get ready to go on to that... Bit. No, let's get on with it at once. At once I'm dying with desire, I tell you, to live this scene, to live it. If he wants to get on with it right away, I'm more than ready. But first of all, the scene between you and her has got to be got over. Do you understand? Oh, my God. She's just been telling me what you already know. That once again my mother's work has been badly done, that the dress is spoiled, and that I must be patient if she's to go on helping us in our misfortune. Oh, but yes, senor... Por qué I not want to hacer uh, dinero, make profit, or take advantage? What? Does she speak like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, yes, she speaks like that half in Spanish. It's most comical. Oh, no, no, oh, it does not seem to me good manners that you laugh of me when I, I force myself to hablar as I can your language, senor. Indeed, no, it, it, it's very wrong of us. You speak like that. Yes, speak like that, madame. It'll bring the house down. We couldn't ask for anything better. It'll bring a little comic relief into the crudity of the situation. Yes, you talk like that. It's absolutely wonderful. Wonderful, and why not? When you hear a certain sort of suggestion made you in a lingo like that, well, there's not going to be much doubt about what your answer is. It almost seems like a joke. You feel inclined to laugh when you hear there's an old senor who wants to amuse himself with me. An old senor, eh, madame? Oh, not so very old, not quite so young, yes, but, well, if he does not please to you, well, he has prudentia. Oh, you old devil, you old witch! Oh, no, no, you no, 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 Calm yourself, my dear. No, 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 no. Just be calm now. Now come and sit down here. Take that woman out of my sight, then. It's impossible for my mother oh, to remain here. Mr. Producer, they can't be here together. That's why when we first came, that woman wasn't with us. If they're on at the same time, the whole thing is inevitably given away in advance. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter a bit. It's only a first run through, just to give us a rough idea how it goes. Everything will come in useful. I can sort out the bits and pieces of it. I'll make something out of it, even if it is all jumbled up. Now, please be calm, madame, and sit down here, nice and quiet. Oh, forgive me, sir. Go on, madame Pache, go on. No, 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 thank you. Uh, here, I, I do not do nothing more with the mother with oh, the present. Now, no. come on, show in the old senor who wants to amuse himself with me. Yes, this scene has got to be played, so let's get on with it. You can go, Madame Pache. Oh, I'm going. I'm going. Most assuredly, I am going. With that. Sure. And now you make your entrance. Very yeah, well. There's no need for you to go out and come in again. Come over here. Pretend that you've already entered. Yes. Now I'm standing here modestly, my eyes on the ground. Oh, come on, speak up. Say good afternoon, miss. In that special tone of voice, you know. Like somebody who's just come in from the street. Well, listen to her. Are you running this rehearsal or am I? Uh, yes, but I... Go on, do as she tells you. Go to the back of the stage. Oh, don't exit. Now come forward again. That's it. Hold it there. I am ready. Get, get, get ready to write yes. now. Good afternoon, miss. Good afternoon. Mm, young, very young. But uh, this, uh, this won't be the first time, will it? The first time that you've been here? Uh, no, sir. You've been here before? Uh, yes, sir. More than once. Well, then, I... Shouldn't any longer be necessary to. Uh, may I take off your hat? No, sir. I I'll take it off myself. Oh, my God. My God. Uh, here, let me oh, take it off. I'll, I'll hang it up for you. Mm. Such a charming, such a dear little head really ought to have a much smarter hat than this. Uh, would you like to come and help me choose one from among these hats of madame? Will you? Oh, I say, those are our hats. Oh, for God's sake, shut up. Don't try to be funny. Well, of course 
We're doing our best to rehearse this scene in case you weren't aware of the fact. Go on from where you left off, please, miss. No, thank you, sir. Come now, don't say no. Do say that you'll accept it. Just to please me. I should be most upset if you weren't. Look here. Here are some rather nice ones. And then it, it would please madame. She puts them out on show on purpose, you know. No, no listen, I, I couldn't wear it. Oh, you're, you're thinking, perhaps, about what they'll say when you go home wearing a new hat. Eh? <laughs> well, now, shall I tell you what to do? <laughs> shall I tell you what to say when you get home? No, it's not, not that I couldn't wear it, because, I'm, as you see, you should have noticed already that the, I'm in mourning. That you are in mourning. Yes, of course. I Forgive me. Of course. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. Believe me, I'm, I'm most profoundly sorry. Stop. Please don't say any more. I really ought to be thanking you. There's no need for you to feel so very sorry or upset. Please don't give another word to what I said. I, I too, you understand... I really ought to forget that I'm dressed like this. Hold it. Stop a minute. Don't write that down. Leave out that last bit. Um, it's going very well. Very well indeed. Now, Lydia and Jimmy. Yes? You go on as we arranged. Uh, it, it's rather delightful, that bit where he offers her the hat, don't you think? Uh, the best bit's coming now. Why aren't we going on? Now be patient, please. Just for a little while. Uh, of course, Jimmy, it'll have to be treated um, rather lightly. Mm, I see him. Put over a slit there. Yes, 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 of course. There's nothing difficult about it at all. Uh, shall we try it now, Jimmy? Oh, yes, as far as I'm concerned, I'll um, go and get ready for my entrance. Good. Now, look, Lydia. Yes? Uh, the scene between you and Madame Pache is finished. Mm -hmm. Now, you're standing... Where are you going? Oh, just a minute. I want to put my hat on again. Yes. Ah, good. Now, you stand here. Yeah. With your head bowed down a bit. But she's not dressed in black. I shall be dressed in black, and much more becomingly than you are. Shut up, please, and watch. Now, come on, let's get going. Entrance. Uh, what was that first line, Edgar? Good afternoon, miss. Oh, oh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> good afternoon, miss. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no. Oh, yes. Shut up. Once and for all, stop that laughing. We shan't get anywhere if we go on like this. <laughs> Forgive me, but I couldn't help laughing. This lady stands just where you put her without budging an inch. But if she's meant to be me, I can assure you that if I heard anybody saying, Good afternoon, in that way and in that tone of voice, I'd burst out laughing. So I had to, you Yes, see. you see, that is it, exactly. His manner, his tone of voice. The hell with your manner and your tone of voice. Just stand to one side, if you don't mind. Let me get a look at this rehearsal. Now, look, if I've got to play an old fellow who's coming into a house of rather doubtful oh, character... don't take any notice of him, Jimmy. Now, please, start again, please. It was going very nicely. All right. Good afternoon, miss. Good afternoon. Very young, mm. very young. Very young. This won't be the first time, I Very hope. young. This won't be the first time, I hope. No, Mr. Producer, not hope. Will it? Will it? You say, will it? It's a question. I'm sure he said... Hope. Well, it's all one hope or whatever it was. Go on, please. Go on. Oh, I, mm, there was one thing, Jimmy. Um, yes. I think perhaps it ought to be... Well, not quite so heavy, you know? Mm -hmm. well, hold on, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Now, you watch me. Right. Good afternoon, miss. Good afternoon. Mm. Very young. See, surprise, fear, and satisfaction. Very young. It uh, won't be the first time, will it, that you've been here? Is that clear? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and then you say, no, sir. Yes, all right. Well, there you are, you see? It, 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 it wants to be a little more... What shall I say? A little more flexible, a little more supple, hmm? Yes, 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 sir. No, sir. You've been here before more than once? You've been here before more than once. Wait a minute. You must let her get her nod in first. You've been here before. Uh-huh. You've been here before more than once. Now what's the matter? Oh, my God. Nothing, nothing. Sir. What joke you carry straight on? More than once? Very well. More than once? Oh, come along. Well, I take your hat? Come along. May I take off your hat? <laughs> Look, I'm not going to stand here and be made a fool of by that woman. And neither am I. Let's pack the whole thing in. Once and for all, will you shut up? Yes, please forgive me, please. Trouble with you is you've got no manners. You go too far. Yes, sir, you're, you're quite right, sir. You're quite right. But, you know, really, you must forgive her. What do you want me to forgive? Absolutely disgusting, the way she's behaving. Yes, but, oh, well, believe me, believe me, it... It has such a very strange effect. But that's inevitable. 
I've told you that already. Yes, yes, I understand Well, then, let's that. hear no more on the subject. I've always had a strong aversion to holding rehearsals with the author present. He's never satisfied. Now, look, come on. Let's get on with it, and let's see if we can have no more laughing. Oh, I shan't laugh anymore. I promise you. My big bit's coming now. Just to wait and see. Well, now, then. When you say, please don't give another thought to what I said, I, too, you understand. You, sir, come in at once with, I understand, I understand, and immediately What? Ask, what does he ask? Why you're in mourning. Oh, no, that's not it at all. Listen, when I told him that I mustn't think about my being in mourning, do you know what his answer was? Well, then, let's take this little frock off at once, shall we? Well, that would be wonderful, wonderful. That would bring the house down. But it's the truth. Well, what's the truth got to do with it? Acting's what we're here for. Truth's all very fine, but only up to a point. And what do you want, then? You'll see, you'll see. Leave everything to me. No, I won't. What you'd like to do, no doubt, is concoct a romantic, sentimental little affair out of my disgust, out of all the reasons, each more cruel, each viler than the other, why I am this sort of woman, why I am what I am. An affair with him. He asks me why I'm in mourning, and I reply with tears in my eyes that my father died only two months ago. No, he must say what he said then. Well, then, let's take this little frock off at once, shall we? And I... My heart's still grieving for my father's death. I went behind there. Do you understand? There, behind that screen. And the, my fingers trembling with shame and disgust. I took off my frock. Undid my breast here. For God's sake, what on earth are you saying, girl? The truth, the truth. Yes, it probably is the truth. I'm not denying it. And I understand. I, I fully appreciate all your horror. But you must realize we simply can't put this kind of thing on the stage. Oh, you can't, can't you? Well, if that's how things are, thanks very much. I'm going. No, 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 no. Look here. I'm going. I'm not stopping here. You worked it all out together, didn't you? The pair of you. You and him, when you were in there. You worked out what was going to be possible on the stage. Oh, thanks very much. I understand. He wants to jump to the bit where he presents his spiritual torments. But I want to present my own drama. Mine. Mine. Ah, there we have it. Your drama. Look here. You'll have to forgive me for telling you this, but uh, there isn't only your part to be considered. Each of the others has his drama, too. He has his, your mother has hers. You can't have one character coming along like this, becoming too prominent, invading the stage in and out of season and overshadowing all the rest. All the characters must be contained within one harmonious picture and presenting only what is proper to present. Oh, it, it would be all very pleasant if each character could have a nice little monologue yes. or, without making any bones about it, give a lecture in which he could tell his audience what's bubbling and boiling away inside him. You must restrain yourself. And believe me, it, it's in your own interest, too. Because all this fury, this exasperation and this disgust, they, they, uh, they make a bad impression. Especially when, and pardon me for mentioning this, you yourself have confessed that you'd had other men there at Madame Pache's before him, and more than once. That's true. But you must remember that those other men mean him for me just as much as he himself does. What? The other men mean him. What do you mean? Isn't it true that in the case of someone who's gone wrong, the person who was responsible for the first fault is responsible for all the faults which follow? And in my case, he is responsible, has been since before I was born. Well, just look at him and see if it isn't true. Very well, then. And does this terrible weight of remorse that's resting on his spirit, does it seem so slight a thing to you? Give him the chance of acting it. How? How can he act all his noble remorse, all his moral torments, if you want to spare him all the horror of one day finding in his arms, after he had asked her to take off her frock, the horror of finding in his arms that child, a woman now, and a fallen woman already, that child whom he used to go and watch as she came out of school. <laughs> The moment we are here, unknown as yet by the public, tomorrow you will present us as you wish, making up your play in your own way. But would you really like to see our drama, to see it flash into life as it did in reality? Why, of course. I couldn't ask for anything better, so that from now on I can use as much as possible of it. Well then, ask my mother to leave us. No, no. 
Don't you allow them to do it, sir. Don't allow them to do it. Madam, it's only so that I can see how it goes. I can't bear it. I can't bear it. But since it's already happened, I don't understand. No. It's happening now. It happens all the time. My torment is no pretense, sir. I'm alive and I'm present always at every moment of my torment. A torment which is forever renewing itself. Always alive and always present. Those two children there, have you heard them say a single word? They can no longer speak. They cling to me still in order to keep my torment living at present, but for themselves, they no longer exist, they no longer exist. And, and she... Well, what about me? She's run away, run away from me and is lost, lost. And if I see her here before me, it's for this reason and for this reason alone, to renew at all time, forever, to bring before me again, present and living, the anguish that I've suffered on her account, too. The eternal moment, as I told you, sir. She, she is here in order to fix me, to hold me suspended throughout all eternity in the pillory of that one fleeting, shameful moment in my life. She cannot renounce her role and use her. You cannot really spare me my agony. Quite so, but I didn't say that I wouldn't present it. As a matter of fact, it'll form the basis of the first act, up to the point where she surprises you. That is right, because it is my sentence. All her passion, all her suffering, which must culminate in her cry. I can still hear it ringing in my ears. That cry sent me mad. You can play me just as you like. It doesn't matter. Dressed if you like, provided that I can have my arms bare at least. Just my arms bare. Because, you see, standing there with my head resting on his chest like this, uh, with my arms round his neck, I could see a vein throbbing away in my arm. And then, just as if that pulsing vein alone gave me a sense of horror, I shut my eyes tight and buried my head in his chest. Scream, Mummy, scream! Scream as you scream then. No, no! She's my daughter. You brute, you brute, she's my daughter. Can't you see that she's my daughter? Excellent, excellent. And then cut, cut. Yes, because that's how it really happened. Oh, yes, we must have the curtain there. That cry and then curtain. Cu Oh, the damn fool, I say, curtain, and he really actually goes and brings the thing down. Oh, but yes, that's wonderful. That'll get them. That's wonderful. Oh, that line and then curtain. We've got something in that first act. Well, this is the oddest rehearsal I've ever been to. Yes. Coming here, men, you take our hats and coats off. What on earth have you got out of the Well, I have no idea. Nice lunch. Oh, well, let's get on with Act Two. Josephine, please. Please. Thank you. Now, if you'll only leave it all to me, as we agreed, everything will sort itself out. This is where we make our entry into his house, in spite of his... Yes, um... yes, yes, but leave it to me, I tell you. Well, so long as it's made quite clear that it was against his wishes... For all the good that's come of it. That doesn't matter. The more harm that it's done us, the more remorse for him. Are we going to get started on the second act, or are we not? I won't say another word. But you know, it won't be possible to play it all in the garden, as you suggested. Why not? Because of him. Me? Must, Must you bring me in? He shuts himself up in his room all the time, holding himself aloof. Oh, and what's more, there's all the boys' part. Poor bewildered little devil. As I told you, all that takes place indoors. I know all about that. On the other hand, you do understand that we can hardly stick up notices telling the audience what the scene is or change the set three or four times in one act. There you do in the good old days. Yes, and it makes it easier to get the sense of the illusion. Illusion, did you say? For heaven's sake, please don't use the word illusion. Please don't use that word. It's a particularly cruel one for us. And why is that? But it's cruel, it's cruel. You should have known that. What ought we to say then? We were referring to the illusion that we have to create on this stage for the audience. With our acting. The illusion of a reality. I understand you, sir. But you, perhaps you can't understand us. Forgive me, because you see, for you and your actors, all this is only, and quite rightly so, all this is only a game. What? What do you mean, a game? We're not children, we're serious actors. I don't deny that. 
And in fact, using the term, I was referring to your art, which must, as this gentleman has said, create a perfect illusion of reality. Precisely, sir. Now, just consider the fact that we, as ourselves, have no other reality outside this illusion. What does all that mean? As I said, what other reality should we have? What for you is an illusion that you have to create for us, on the other hand, is our sole reality. The only reality we know. But it's not only true in our case, you know. Just think it over. Can you tell me who you are? Why? Who I am? <laughs> I'm myself. And suppose I were to tell you that that wasn't true. Suppose I told you that you were me. I should say you were mad. <laughs> yes, you're quite right to laugh, because here everything is a game. And you can object, therefore, that it's only in fun that that gentleman, who is himself, must be me, who on the contrary am myself. That is the person you see here. There, you see. I've caught you in a trap. <laughs> now, I should like to invite you to abandon this game. And once again, I ask you, in all seriousness, who are you? What a cheek the fellow has. A man who calls himself a character comes in here and asks me who I am. A character, sir, may always ask a man who he is. Because a character has a life which is truly his, marked with his own special characteristics. And as a result, he is always somebody, whilst a man, and I'm not speaking of you personally at the moment, but man in general, can quite well be nobody. That's as maybe, but you're asking me these questions. Me, do you understand the producer, the boss? But only in order to know if you, you as you really are, are seeing yourself as, for instance, after all the time that has gone by, you see yourself as you were at some point in the past. With all the illusions that you had then, with everything, all the things that you had deep down inside you, everything that made up your external world, everything as it appeared to you then, and as it was, as it was in reality for you then. Well, thinking back on those illusions which you no longer have, on all those things that no longer seem to be what they were once upon a time, don't you feel that, well, I won't say these boards... No, no, but the, the, the very earth itself is slipping away under your feet when you reflect that in the same way this you that you now feel yourself to be, all your reality as it is today is destined to seem an illusion tomorrow. Well, where does all this get us anyway? Nowhere. I only wanted to make you see that if we characters have no reality outside the world of illusion, it would be as well if you mistrusted your own reality, the reality that you breathe and touch today, because like the reality of yesterday, it is fated to reveal itself as a mere illusion tomorrow. Oh, excellent. So you would say that you and this play of yours that you've been putting on for my benefit are more real than I am. Without a doubt. Really? I thought you'd understood that right from the very beginning. More real than I am. If your reality can change from one day to the next... But everybody knows it can change like that. It's always changing, just like everybody else is. No, no, no! No, you see. Ours does not change. You see, that is the difference between us. Our reality doesn't change. It can't change. It can never be in any way different from what it is, because it is already fixed, just as it is. Forever. Forever. It is this reality. And it's terrible. It's terrible, this immutable reality. It should make you shudder to come near us. Yes, I should like to know, however, when anyone ever saw a character step out of his part and begin a long dissertation on it, like the one you've just been making. Yes. Expounding it, explaining it. Can you tell me? I've never seen it happen before. <laughs> you've never seen it happen before because authors usually hide the details of their work of creation. Once the characters are alive, 
Once they are standing truly alive before their author, he does nothing but follow the words and gestures that they suggest to him. And he must want them to be what they themselves want to be. For woe betide him if he doesn't do what they wish him to do. When a character is born, he immediately acquires such an independence, even of his own author, that everyone can imagine him in a whole host of situations in which his author never thought of placing him. They can even imagine his acquiring sometimes a significance that the author never dreamt of giving him. Yes, yes, I know all about well, that. Well, then, why are you so astonished at seeing us? Just imagine what a misfortune it is for a character to be born alive created by the imagination of an author who afterwards sought to deny him life. Now tell me whether a character who's been left unrealized in this way, living yet without life, whether this character hasn't the right to do what we are doing now, here and now, for your benefit, after we have spent, oh, oh, such eons of time, believe me, doing it for his benefit, trying to persuade him, trying to urge him to realize us. First of all, I would present myself to him, and then she would. Yes, he's right. And then her poor mother. Yes, what he says is true. I'd go and tempt him there in his gloomy study just at twilight. He'd be sitting there sunk in an armchair, not bothering to stir himself and switch on the light, content to let the room get darker and darker, until the whole room was filled with a darkness that was alive with our presence. We were there to tempt him. Oh, go away, all of you. Leave us alone. Mummy and her son, I and the little girl, the boy by himself, always by himself, then he and I together. And then by myself, by myself, alone in that darkness. Oh, yes, my life. Oh, what scenes, what wonderful scenes we suggested to him. You did. And it may well be that it's all your fault that he wouldn't give us the life we asked for. You were too persistent. You, you, were, you were too impudent. You exaggerated too much. What, when it was he who wanted me to be what I am? Oh, do let's get on. Let's get on. For God's sake, let's have some action. It looks to me as if we've got too much action for you already, just staging our entry into his house. You yourself said that you couldn't be sticking up notices or changing the set every five minutes. And neither can we. Of course we can't. What we've got to do is combine and group all the action into one continuous, well-knit scene. Not the sort of thing that you want. <laughs> First of all, your younger brother coming home from school and wandering about the house like some lost soul, hiding behind doors and brooding on a plan that... that what did you say it does to him? Dries him up, shrivels him up completely. Yeah, well, well. And all the time you can see it more and more clearly in his eyes, wasn't that what you said? Well, yes, just look at him. Yeah. And then at the same time, you want the girl to be playing in the garden, blissfully unaware of everything. The boy in the house, the little girl in the garden, I ask you. <laughs> yes, happily playing in the sun. That is the only pleasure I have, her happiness. All the joy that she gets from playing in the garden. After the wretchedness and the squalor of that horrible room where we all four slept together and she had to sleep with me, just think of it. My vile, contaminated body next to hers with her holding me tight in her loving, innocent little arms. She only had to get a glimpse of me in the garden, and she'd run up to me and take me by the hand. She wasn't interested in the big flowers. She'd run about looking for the weeny ones so that she could point them out to me. And she'd be so happy and so excited. We'll have the garden in, don't you worry. We'll have the garden scene in. Just you wait and see. You'll be quite satisfied with how I arrange it. We'll play everything in the garden. Hey, John! Yes? Let me have something in the shape of a tree or two. A couple of not-too-large cypresses in front of this fountain. That'll do. For a moment, anyway, to give us a rough idea. Oh, Hayes, huh? let me have something for a sky, will you? Huh? Something for a sky, a backcloth to go behind the fountain. Not quite. I said I wanted a sky. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Leave it, leave it. I'll fix it myself. Hey, you there on the lights. Yes. 
Everything off. Right. And let me have the moonlight blues on. Blues in the back. Uh, Cut the blue spots on the back cloth. Yes, that's it. That's just right. Now there, do you see? Now the boy, instead of hiding behind doors inside the house, can move about the garden and hide behind these trees. But you know, it'll be rather difficult to find a little girl to play that scene with you. The one where she shows you the flowers. Oh, well, let's look at the boy. Um, now, boy, come down here a bit, will you? Let's see how it works out. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, good God, here's a fine how do you do. There's something odd about this boy. What's the matter with him? Oh, my God, you have to say something. Now, come on, forward a little. Well, let me see you. Mm-hmm. Well, now, hide yourself. That's it. Now, I'll try popping your head out a bit. Take a look round. That's excellent. Yes, yes, yes. Excellent. Wait. First of all, the little girl is to go to the fountain. Poor little darling, you're looking so bewildered with those beautiful big eyes. You must be wondering just where you are. Well, we're on a stage, dear. Hmm? Well, it's a place where you play at being serious. They put on plays here. And now we're putting a play on, really and truly. Even you, you little darling, my dear little darling. What a terrible play for you. And what a horrible end they've thought out for you. The garden and the fountain. Yes, it's a make-believe fountain. The pity is, darling, that everything's make-believe here. But perhaps you like a make-believe fountain better than a real one so that you can play in it, hmm? No, it'll be a game for the others, not for you, unfortunately. Because you're real and you really play by a real fountain. A lovely big green one with masses of bamboo palms casting shadows and looking at your reflection in the water. And lots and lots of little baby ducklings swimming about in it, breaking the shadow into a thousand little ripples. You try to take hold of one of the ducklings. <gasps> no! Rosetta, no! Your mummy's not looking after you, so great is her desire to be with him, her son. Because of that swine, I feel as if all the devils in hell were loose inside me. And he, your little brother, what are you doing drooping there like that? Always the little beggar boy. It'll be your fault too if that baby drowns because of the way you go on. As if I didn't pay for everybody when I got you into his house. What have you got there? What are you trying to hide? Out with it. Take that hand out of the pocket. Where did you get that gun from? And how did you manage to lay your hands on it? You idiot! If I'd been you, I shouldn't have killed myself. I'd have killed one of them or the pair of them, father and son together. Come, my dear little darling. Come and play in the beautiful fountain. Just lie down like this so that no one can see you. <laughs> ah, that's it. Good, good, good. And at the same time... What do you mean, and at the same time? Oh, no, nothing of the sort. There never was any scene between this woman and me. You make her tell you what really happened. Come here, Peter and Janet. Right. I'll see how they acted. You'll have to play these parts. Go on, madam, will you? Yes, it's true, sir. I'd gone to his room at the time. There, did you hear? To my room, not into the garden. Doesn't matter at all. As I said, we'll have to run all the action together into one composite scene. Fascinating. Such intensity. What do you want? Nothing. I was just looking at you. After all, I've got to play you. Oh. And you're here too, are you? All ready to play her part, I suppose. Well, if I've got to... That's the idea. And if you want my opinion, you ought to be damn grateful for all the attention they're paying you. Indeed. Thank you. But hasn't it dawned on you yet that you aren't going to be able to stage this play? Not even the tiniest vestige of us is to be found in you. He's quite right. He's quite right, you know. Oh, all right. Get back with the others, Peter and Janet, will it's you? It's no use your bothering. I'm not having anything to do with this. Now, do be quiet for a moment. Let me listen to what your mother has to say. You were saying... You had gone to his room? Yes, I'd gone to his room. I couldn't bear the strain any longer. I wanted to pour out my heart to him. I wanted to tell him of all the anguish that was tormenting me. But as soon as he saw me come in... He... There was no scene between us. I rushed out of the room. I didn't want to get involved in any scenes because I never have been involved in any. Do you understand? Yes, that is what happened. That is what happened. But for the purposes of this play, we've simply got to have a scene between you and him. It's absolutely essential. I'm quite ready to take part in one. 
Oh, if you could only find some way to give me an opportunity of speaking to him, if only for a moment, so that I can pour out my heart You will him. do what she asks, you understand? You will do what your mother asks. I'm doing nothing. My God, you will do what I tell you, or else... Can't you hear how she's pleading for you? Haven't you a spark of feeling in you for your mother? No, I haven't. Oh, for God's sake, let's have done with all this. Once and for all, let's have done with please, it. Please, please. You must obey me. You must. Oh, what's come over you, father? Why are you in this terrible frenzy? Haven't you any sense of decency? Going about parading your shame. And ours, too. Oh, I'm having nothing to do with this affair. Nothing, do you hear? And by making this stand, I'm interpreting the wishes of our author, who didn't wish to put us on the stage. Oh, God, you come along here. He did, I didn't. Why well, aren't you here now? Oh, it was he who wanted to come, and he dragged us all along with him. Then the pair of them went in there with you and agreed what was to go into the play. But he didn't only stick to what really did occur. No, as if that wasn't enough for any man, he had to put in things that never even happened. All right, then. You tell me what really happened. You can at least do that. You rushed out of your room without saying a word. With... Without saying a word, I didn't want to get involved in a scene. And then? Well, what did you do then? Nothing. As I was crossing the garden. Well? As you were crossing the garden? Why do you want to force me to tell you it's horrible? The fountain, the fountain. The little girl. There, in the fountain. His mother was following him. And what did you do? I rushed up to the fountain. I was about to dive in and fish her out. Then all of a sudden I pulled up short. Behind that tree I saw something that made my blood run cold. The boy. The boy was standing there, stock still, with madness in his eyes, staring like some <laughs> insane creature at his little sister who was lying drowned in the fountain. I moved towards him, and then... Oh, oh my oh. little boy, my little boy! Help, help! Is he wounded? Is he badly hurt? He's dead. The little boy is dead! Oh, it's a terrible thing to happen! What do you mean, dead? It's all make-believe. It's all make just believe. a pretense. Don't get taken in by it. No, it's not! Right. It's just a pretense. What do you mean, pretense? Reality, ladies and gentlemen, reality, reality, reality. Go, oh, pretense, reality, reality, pretense. Go to hell, a lot of you. Lights, 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 lights. Oh, oh, my God. Nothing like this has ever happened to me before. I've lost a whole day on their account. Now oh, you can go home now. Oh, All of you. There's nothing we can do now. It's too late to start rehearsing again. Oh. I'll see you all this evening. All right. Goodbye. All right. Hey, David. Yes? Everything off. Quite sure. Oh, hell, you might at least leave me one light so that I can see what I'm got. I wasn't meant to be mixed up in all this. How do you know what I'm like? When my you ever son, he tore me away from him. He sent me away. Oh, if my God. You could only foresee all the ill that can result from the good that we believe we're doing. <laughs> good. That was Six Characters in Search of an Author by Luigi Pirandello. The part of the father was played by Donald Wolfitt. The stepdaughter by April Ulrich, the son by Gabriel Wolfe, and the mother by Vivian Chatterton. With Noel Johnson as the company producer, and B. Duffel as Madame Patry. The play was translated by Frederick May, and adapted and produced for BBC World Theatre by H. B. Fortyne. <laughs>